Lesson 1.8 Word Problem Solving Comparison Problems with Addition and Subtraction. We can use the strategy Draw a Diagram to solve comparison word problems that involve addition or subtraction. A comparison problem compares one amount to another amount. Our diagram can be a bar model. A bar model helps us see how information is related and we're comparing two quantities. If we have 10 boys and 8 girls and we want to know how many boy, boys there are than girls, we put the boys here, the girls quantity here, and whatever this difference is, is how many more boys there are than girls. In a bar model, the two boxes represent the quantities being compared, and the bracket represents the difference. We can check our answer by using estimates to see if our answer is reasonable. We learned about that in video 1.4, which is linked in the description. We can also check our answer by using an inverse operation. We learned about that in lesson 1.7, which is also linked in the description. And remember to label our answers. 10 minus 8 is equal to two more boys. We would label it boys. Mr. Lee's fruit market sold 15,930 pieces of fruit in 2017. Then in 2018, sold 17,213 pieces of fruit. How many more pieces of fruit did he sell in 2018 than 2017. So what do we need to find? The difference in fruit sales for 2017 and 2018. What information should we use? That 2017 is 15,930 and 2018 is 17,213. And what strategy can we use? The one we've been learning about, draw a bar graph. Then write an equation. So we make our bar models. Here's our quantity for 2018, 17,213. Here's our quantity for 2017, 15,930. And we're looking for this difference. We write a subtraction equation and start subtracting from the ones place. It's because we need a difference, we use subtraction. We have a 3 minus 0, which is 3. Now we have 1 and need to take away 3, but we can't because the 1 isn't large enough. So we need to regroup from this place value. The 2 will become a 1, and that 1 will become an 11. 11 minus 3 is equal to 8. Now we have a 1 and we need to take 9 away, and we can't, so we need to regroup again from the 1,000's place value. The 7 becomes a 6, the 1 becomes an 11, 11 minus 9 is equal to 2. We remember to put our comma so it's neatly lined up with the other commas, and 6 minus 5 is 1. We know the difference between these two numbers is 1,283. So Mr. Lee sold 1,283 more pieces of fruit in 2018 than 2017. And we can check our answer by estimating or by using an inverse operation. Remember those two lessons are linked in the description. Now I'm going to round to the 1,000 place value. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I rounded to the 10,000's place value, this 7 would tell the 1 to go up to a 2 and it would round to 20,000. And if we did it to the 10,000's, then this 5 would tell the 1 to go up to 2, and that would also be 20,000. And when we subtract 20,000 minus 20,000, our estimate would be 0. So in order to be a little more accurate, we're going to round to the 1,000 place value. The 2 tells the 7 to stay the same, and this 10,000 is going to go along for the ride, isn't it? So it's going to round to 17,000. The 9 tells the 5 to go up to a 6, and that rounds to 16,000. When we do our subtraction, our estimate is 1,000. And that's very close to our exact amount, so 
our answer is reasonable. Now, because we used subtraction to find this difference, we can use an inverse operation of addition, and we can add the difference and the subtrahend together. And if they equal our minuend from up here, we know we did our math correctly. Springer Mountain in Georgia has an elevation of 3,782 feet above sea level. Mount Albert in North Carolina is 1,418 feet more than Springer Mountain. What is the elevation of Mount Albert? So what do we need to find? The elevation of Mount Albert. And what information should we use? That Springer Mountain is 3,782 feet and Mount Albert is 1,418 feet more than Springer Mountain. What strategy can we use? We can draw a bar graph, then write our equation. So notice how it says feet more than the amount given. We know it's going to be addition. That's our clue. We need to add the elevation of Springer Mountain to the 1,418 to find the Mount Albert elevation. So our bar graph is going to look like this. We add 3,782 plus 1,418. 8 plus 2 is 10. We regroup the 1 and put the 0 down. 8, 9, 10. We regroup the 1, put the 0 down. 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 1 more is 12. We regroup the 1, put the 2 down, and 1 plus 3 plus 1 is equal to 5. We have 5,200 feet. So Mount Albert has an elevation of 5,200 feet above sea level. We can check our answer by estimating or by using an inverse operation. We estimate this 7 tells the 3 to go up to a 4, so it rounds to 4,000. This 4 tells the 1 to stay the same, so it rounds to 1,000. And 4,000 plus 1,000 is equal to 5,000. So our estimate is close. Our answer is reasonable. See? They're kind of close, aren't they? We can also use an inverse operation because this is addition. We can use subtraction as our inverse operation. If we get the original add-end up here, this first add-end, as our difference, we know we did it correctly. We have a 0 minus 8, and we can't do that. So what we did was we grouped this 2 and 0 together, made it a 19, and gave 1 to the 1's place. We had 10 minus 8, that's 2. We did 9 minus 1, that's 8. But then we only had a 1 here, and we needed to take 4 away. So we regrouped from the 5, it became a 4, and we added this other 1 here. So now we have 11. 11 take away 4 is 7, and 4 take away 1 is 3. We have the exact same amount as our add end up here. We did it correctly. Now if this confused you about the combined placed values, we learned about that in Lesson 1.5 and 1.7, and, of course, they're linked in the description if you missed it. Wrigley Field Baseball Park has a capacity of 41,649. Yankee Stadium has a capacity of 47,309. How many more people can fit in Yankee Stadium than Wrigley Field? We can draw a bar model to show the parts of the problem. Here's Yankee Stadium's capacity, and here's Wrigley Field's capacity. We need to know how many more people can fit in Yankee Stadium, so we need to know this difference for this bracket right here. We need to find a difference, so we write a subtraction equation. 47,309 minus 41,649. We start with the ones place. We have 9 minus 9. That's 0. Now we have 0 minus 4, and we can't do that, so we need to regroup from this 3, which is going to become a 2, which makes the 0 a 10. 
10 minus 4 is equal to 6. Now we have 2 minus 6, and we can't because the 2 isn't big enough. We regroup from the 7, it becomes a 6, and the 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. We remember to write our comma nice and neat in a line. And 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. 4 minus 4 is 0, so we don't have anything there. So we find our difference is 5,660. We can estimate to check. We have this 3 is telling the 7 to stay the same, so we have 47,000. This 6 is telling the 1 to go up to a 2, so we have 42,000. And that rounds to about 5,000. And our estimate is close, so our answer is reasonable. If we had rounded using the 10,000s place, the 7 would tell the 4 to go up to a 5. This 2 would tell the 4 to stay the same. And we would have 50,000 minus 40,000, which would have been 10,000. And that's too big. That's too far away. We need a closer estimate. So we went to the next place value, the 1,000s, to be more accurate with our estimate. Now let's get a little deeper in this. We know that Yankee Stadium was 47,309 capacity and Wrigley Field was 41,649. And we found the difference between the two stadiums was 5,660 for the capacity. So that's how much more Yankee Stadium had than Wrigley Field. What if a third stadium had a capacity of 45,309? Look at that number very carefully and compare it to these numbers. Do you notice anything? How many more people would fit in the third stadium than Wrigley Field? Well, that 45,309 is exactly 2,000 less than Yankee Stadium. When we take Yankee Stadium's capacity and subtract that amount, we get exactly 2,000. Well, we can subtract 2,000 from our previous answer. We can do 5,660 minus 2,000 and get 3,660. So we would know that third stadium would be 3,660 more than Wrigley Field. All we did was change the thousands place. The other numbers stayed the same. If we notice that this is just 2,000 different than this one, we could use mental math and just take 2,000 away. So when we need to add, we make one long bar to sh show the combined quantity. We have a total underneath here, that would be the sum. When we need to subtract, we stack two bars to compare two quantities to find the difference. And that bracket is the difference. Here we have a table of the baseball park capacities. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six baseball parks. There's many more than that, but here's just six of them. How much more capacity does Coors Field have than Marlins Park? We look at Coors Field and see the capacity is 50,445. And Marlins, right here, is 36,742. We need to find the difference between the two. We're going to write a subtraction equation. And we start with the ones place. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. We have 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0. Now we have 4 and need to take 7 away. But we can't because 4 isn't large enough. We look at this place value and it's a 0. So we can't regroup from here. But we could regroup with looking at this as a 50. By combining these two place values and looking at it as a 50, we can regroup 1 and it will become a 49. Now we can give that 1 to this place value and the 4 will become a 14. And 14 minus 7 is equal to 7. We put our comma nice and lined up. Now we can do 9 minus 6, which is 3, and 4 minus 3, which is 1. And we know that Coors Field is 
703 capacity more than Marlins Park. Now, we're going to do combined capacities. Is the combined capacity of Coors Field and Miller Park, Coors Field and Miller Park, these two parks, is it greater or less than the combined capacity of Nationals Park and SunTrust Park? So we can round off the amounts to compare them. Or if we're rounding to the 10,000s place, this zero tells the five to stay the same and it's a 50,000. This one tells the four to stay the same and it rounds to 40,000. And combined, it's 90,000. This 41,339, this one tells the four to stay the same and it's 40,000 when we round it. This one tells this four to stay the same and that's 40,000. Combined, it's 80,000. So which two parks is greater or less? We can see this is a greater number, this is a less number. The combined capacity of Coors Park and Miller Park is greater by around 10,000, isn't it? Because this is an estimate, it's not exact, so it's approximately 10,000. Now it wants to know how much greater. So now we do need an exact amount. So we're gonna to need to add, then subtract, to find how much greater. So here's Coors Field and Miller Park. We're gonna add them together. Our estimate was 90,000, and we get five plus zero is five, four plus zero is four, four plus nine is 13. We regroup the one and put the three down. We have one plus zero plus one, which is two, and five plus four, which is nine. And our actual amount is 92,345. For Nationals Park and SunTrust Park, our estimate was 80,000. We add the two amounts together. We have nine plus four, which is 13. We regroup the one over here and put the three down. We have eight plus three plus one, which is 12. We regroup the one, put the two down. We have three plus one, which is four. And the zero, it still equals four. We have one plus one is two and four plus four is eight and we have 82,423. Look at the 10 and the 1,000s place. We have 92,000, 82,000. That is about 10,000 difference, isn't it? When we do the actual subtraction to find the difference between these two quantities, we have five minus three, which is two, four minus two, which is two, we have a three minus a four, which we can't do, so we had to regroup from this two. It became a one, so the three became a 13. 13 take away four is nine. Then we had that one take away two, and we couldn't, so we regrouped from the nine. It became an eight. The one became an 11, and 11 minus two is equal to nine, and eight minus eight is zero, so we didn't put anything there. So the combined capacity of Coors Field and Miller Park is greater by 9,922. So what we had to do to find how much greater is we had to add these and get a sum, then add these and get a sum, then subtract this amount from this amount to get a difference. And we found out how much more these two ballparks capacity is than these two bar ballparks. So that's it for chapter one. We're gonna be moving on to chapter two, and we're gonna be learning about multiplying different quantities by a one-digit number. I hope I'll see you there. Keep trying hard. Bye.